Right down the camera lens. So what's Phil Brown like to play for? Yeah, he's top man, you know, he, uh, he's, uh, he's sort of this place out, big style. Like. The character that he has is very um, infectious, you know, like uh, he's full of confidence and it always rubs up on you. Wants us to play at a tempo and play good football, so yeah, it's enjoyable. We obviously work hard and um, play good football. Were the rumours true? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you like a good sing song. This is the best trip I've ever been on. He doesn't mind if he doesn't sound too good. If singing's a pastime, football's his lifelong passion. He's 54, a manager for 15 years. Bolton, Derby, Hull and Preston, he's been around. The North End conquered, now the challenge of South End. So Phil, you've been here a year now. How would you assess your progress? Well, at the moment, it's, uh, it's hunky-dory. Uh, no, a year in charge in, in any football club, you know, by definition, I think the League Managers Association brought out a statistic that lower league football clubs or lower league managers, I think the average lifespan of a, a lower league manager is 14 months. So in two months' time, I'm going to be out of work. The response of the players this season has been magnificent from my perspective. I think when I first arrived at the football club, this was a dark dank, dingy kind of room with no real brightness, no liveliness, no nothing, no, nothing vibrant about it, you know, and, and now all of a sudden you get uh, a lot of vibrancy, you get players coming in on, on, on a morning and, and wanting to come into work. Brown replaced Paul Sturrock, his arrival was seen as quite a coup. You've managed in the top flight, you're now in League Two, is it vastly different? No, I don't think it is. In the lower divisions you see a lot of good players on the training ground and then they don't carry it onto the onto the field of play, whereas in, for me, in the higher divisions, you don't see as good uh, a working session or a training session Monday to Friday, but you certainly see the end product on a Saturday. He remains Hull's most successful ever manager, guiding them to the top flights for the first time in 104 years. But he's often remembered for this, 4-0 down, conducting a half-time team talk on the pitch at Manchester City. Football dishes out a hand and you've got to play the hand. You could say that I played the hand wrongly in the, in the Premier League. I don't think I did. You know, having managed in all the divisions, I, I really do still see this as a great challenge. Looks pretty serious out there, but you seem to have brought an element of fun to it too. Well, in, in weather like this, in conditions like this, it's the best job in the world, isn't it? You know, you, you come out here for a couple of hours and. And uh, the place, I said, about three or four weeks ago was bubbling, you know, people are, are wanting to play and wanting to get in the team, and that's the best thing you can ever wish for as a manager. Nice piece of salmon, actually. <laughs> so you're right in there, in the playoff mix. Were you hoping for that in your first year in charge? Um, yeah, it was part of the, um, part of the remit when I, I did the interview with the, uh, the chairman was to go hand in hand with the, the building of a new stadium. Obviously, that when we cut the first sod, which I'm hoping is going to be next month, uh, will be coinciding with, it's a 12 to 14 month build. So when you work, do the math, you know, you're hopefully going to be in a higher division, if not two. I've got a wealth of experience in a, high, in, in a lot of the higher divisions. And he's brought me to the football club to get promoted, quite simply. So that's, that's the deal. I accepted the, uh, the deal. I'm just hoping that he accepts my side of the bargain, which is to start building a new stadium. And that's key for you? Mm, without a shadow of a doubt, that's part and parcel of, um, of why I'm here. I was given a two-year contract. I'm already in talks and negotiations with the chairman about extending that. It would be crazy for me to come all this way down in terms of four divisions if we didn't have a bigger plan to get promoted first and foremost and then to go forward as a um, as a bigger business, as a bigger football club. Training over, but a manager's work is never done. Time to make a surprise visit to a fan who's been in hospital. I don't feel this is, is hardship by any stretch of the imagination. This is, this is a nice thing to do, um, to put a smile on somebody's face. You know, let them know a little bit about what, you know, since he's been in hospital, since he's had the hip replacement, what, what is going on at South End. I don't think there's nothing better than the manager going knocking at his door and, paying him a visit. Good afternoon. 
you okay? Yeah, yeah. 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 DVDs of the games Chris hasn't been able to make. My end of the bargain was to perform at home this season, you know, because we only won six games at home last year, and now we've only lost four out of twenty this year. Well, this is a bit better than having a relative bring you a bunch of grapes. <laughs> it is. It is. I know. I had a card. Yeah, it's Seafield Brown knocking on my front door, which is unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, no, pleasure. Thanks, okay. Thanks, okay. See you later. Thank you very much. Cheers. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.